here with Jason Day after a 67 uh, really great round of golf today, especially that closing stretch with those three birdies. What was going through your mind as you were playing that stretch of golf? Yeah, uh, I, I honestly was just trying to think. I, I was pretty patient throughout the whole day. I just knew that if I could get myself on the green somewhere, I, I felt like my stroke is is in a position where I can hold putts outside of 25 feet. Um, especially with the rhythm and the tempo. Uh, so it was nice to be able to finish three, three on the trot. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Still one more day to go, so can't get too far ahead of myself. I know that I, I'm going to do some more putting and more, more hitting this afternoon. But, uh, yeah, overall very happy with how, how the game turned out. Uh, Justin Ray tweeted a really interesting stat about you. I want to read this to you. You have the best final round scoring average over the last 10 years of anyone with three or more rounds played at Torrey Pines. Okay. So what is it about this place that seems to bring out the best in your game? I don't know. I, I mean, I won the World Juniors here back in, back in the day, and I've, I, I kind of, since I, that was the first time I ever uh, came across to the United States. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've kind of fallen in love with uh, the San Diego area. Uh, and this golf course, both golf courses actually. And being able to win in 2015 and 2018, um, it's a tough style of golf course, you know, you gotta be very, very patient with yourself out here. It's uh, it's easy to kind of force some things. So um, it's nice to have that stat, but uh, you know, that's gonna go out the window tomorrow. I gotta try and focus on, on, on doing the right things. And if I can do that, then hopefully add them up at the end of the day and, and hold that trophy but the good thing is that I'm uh, I'm in position to be able to win a tournament and that's been a long time uh, you mentioned those wins you won here twice how much are you leaning on those experiences if at all do they enter your mind for tomorrow not really I mean it's it's a total di I'm a different player uh, than I was in 2015 and 2018 um, in a different position uh, I was I'm coming off a lot of confidence in those years coming to a stretch where I haven't played that great so um, all that stuff goes out the window um, when tomorrow comes around. But you know what? I'm looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be good to be out there in and amongst, you know, final round groups and being in contention to win a tournament. That's been a long time com coming for me, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's good to see you out there again. Best of luck. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. You're a free man. All righty. Thank you. Jason Day talking to our Kira K. Dixon. I love the question about what is it about this place. I don't know. I won the juniors here. He's also a former world number one who's won this tournament twice. Uh, your thoughts on what you saw from Day? Well, look, I agree with you. It was a great question, Kira. The whole world was thinking that what is it about this golf course that allows you to play so well? This golf course has allowed for great scrambling. You know, the fairways can be so tight and the rough so thick that almost everybody's in it and inevitably they're going to scramble. Brent Snedeker has a marvelous record around this golf course, and he's a fabulous scrambler. Tiger Woods wasn't winning all those championships here out of the fairway, and nor has Jason Day. Uh, and, you know, recently it hasn't been the fact that he's been all over the place. It's just that he's been unhealthy. And when you start to look at Jason Day the last four or five years, and you can see a corresponding decline in his golf game, going back to 2017, 2018, of course, the year before he was the number one player in the world, and you see things are sort of slipping to the abyss. And this year coming in here, you see it at the bottom, 197th. And a lot of things have gone awry. It was never that he was the best iron player, but in 2016, he was 33rd in strokes gained approach. But in the last three, four years, it has fallen off. He's outside the top 100. And because of his bad back, I doubt that he can spend as much time practicing putting. And so every single year, go back to 16, he was second or excuse me, uh, first in, in putting. But the last couple of years, he's been 30th, 67th, 95th. Uh, and we'll just take a look at his history here, of course. To Kara's point, to your point, Witt, uh, he has played very well around here. But a lot of things work in his favor here. He's very long, four par fives here, so it's par 72. He has been one of the you know, longest every single year here. Uh, and one of the best putters in the world and on bumpy these greens this year are not they don't look particularly bumpy but i've always said you know the best putters on sort of powana greens it's like great ball strikers in windy conditions it allows them to have advantages uh over the other players but to his point he is not the same player that he was when he was racking up all those great finishes then and almost all those he was amongst the leaders in driving distance this week as we speak he's 35th in driving distance because of the bad back, because of the transition, he's trying to soften things up, and he's having to rely more on precision and, and more on scrambling than, than, than even when he was at his best.